Hi, I'm Charlie Walker. I'm a three-time space shuttle flyer. Flew on uh, missions 41D, 51D, and 61B. Twice aboard Discovery, once aboard Atlantis. And I've got a story. On my first uh, flight, actually before my first flight, as we tried to launch Discovery, uh, the first flight, the first crew that I flew with was the initial flight of the Orbiter Discovery. When we first tried to launch on Discovery, well, the very first time in the June of 1984, there was a computer glitch and uh, we had to stay on the ground. It was discovered hours before the launch, even before we went out to uh, board the vehicle. So we stayed on the ground and waited for the replacement of that computer to take place. Scheduled again for the next day. So that day, in June of 1984, we went to the launch pad in the morning, just about sunrise. Everybody's a little bit nervous. There's only one veteran on that crew. The rest of us were uh, first-time flyers. And uh, nervous, getting on board, first flight of a new vehicle. We sit there, strapped in, countdown goes down to T-minus five seconds. The rocket engines start igniting. Three liquid fuel rocket engines on the back end of Discovery, all beginning, one after the other. Well, we got through the ignition of the second one, but then, on board and on the ground, computers detected a problem with one of the rocket engines starting up and shut everything off. T minus two seconds, the rocket launch is scrubbed. It's called an on pad launch abort. We hear these words in the headsets and our helmets. Uh, everybody on the ground is hearing these. This had never happened before in the shuttle program and only once in the American Human Spaceflight Program during Gemini. Not a, uh, not a moment when anybody was smiling. A lot of energy out there, ready to go off in some fashion or another, and suddenly everything is stopped, hopefully. Tank pressures are still going up. Uh, electrical systems are still charged to ignite rocket motors. And very quickly, the software did in fact take those down to safe conditions, but it took a few minutes for the operators, the human beings, both in our crew as well as on the ground, to in fact verify that that was happening. And all that time, while our nerves are beginning to come down in the cockpit, um, we did not realize that the tons of liquid hydrogen and oxygen that had been dumped unburned on the launch pad had in fact ignited from some of the re last remaining sparks and heat from uh, the dying rocket engine thrust. There was a fire on the launch pad, a hydrogen fuel fire. It's invisible to the eye. So the cameras looking at the launch pad for launch control didn't even see it. Now in retrospect, you can go back and look at the videotapes and see heat waves rising, and that was not the hottest of Florida mornings, but there was a fire burning there, and it wasn't for about two, three, maybe four minutes before anyone on the ground realized there was a fire around the launch vehicle. Well, we heard about this and the tension started going back up again, but in short order, Launch Control figured out that they start the, uh, the sequence of flushing the pad, of drenching the pad with, with water, which is normally the case during a, an actual ignition and launch, then the fire would be extinguished, and that did happen within eight minutes' time. Of course, the shuttle is designed to withstand high temperatures on the outside, so there was no real damage to the vehicle. Uh, some paint uh, scorched here and there, and uh, some of the steel structure and wiring on the pad had to be replaced. But let me tell you, as they say in the aviation business, in the cockpit that morning, there was a pretty high pucker factor until we figured out that we were good and safe, and uh, yes, would live to launch another day.